one of the essential truths about cyber power is that no one can agree precisely what it is or whether it even exists. But in the conversations that we have about cyber power, it's essentially the ability or capacity of an actor to leverage digital technologies to pursue their strategic objectives. Now, they could come in many forms, of course. We often think of military and intelligence power, but it could also be financial, law enforcement, diplomatic power as well. And essentially, when we talk about cyber power, we think about an actor, their ability to generate power in and through cyberspace and to, uh, to leverage digital technologies for those purposes. The question of who has cyber power is central to thinking about uh, cyber security and cyber diplomacy uh, and so on in the modern world. When we think of cyber power, or indeed any form of power in this environment, we tend to think it's just states that have it. So that leads us to think about military and intelligence power, about diplomacy, about economic uh, uh, power and so on. But it's very clear that this, in this environment, there are many other actors, non-state actors, who have influence and authority in this environment. So when we're thinking about cyber power, we have to ask the questions about whether those actors, firms, non-state armed actors perhaps, uh, civil society, have some form of power in this environment and how that interacts with the more conventional understanding of power as a state-centered activity. Cyber power matters because this is the language of 21st century statecraft. It matters because in practical terms, this is what states are doing. And any, any conversation or discussion that we have about cybersecurity, cyber defense, cyber diplomacy, uh, and so on, at, at its root, there is the exercise or pursuit of power in one or several forms. And cyber power is essential to understanding those dynamics and behaviors. Cyber power from the perspective of the analyst is useful because it draws attention to what actors are doing in the international system uh, under the broad rubric of cyber power and therefore we can use the resources that we already have available in understanding power uh, and, and international behaviours and, and look afresh, if you like, at this new set of, of behaviours and dynamics in the international system but at the same time understanding that perhaps there's something novel about cyber power um, that we can use to understand international behaviour. Measuring any form of power is difficult. Uh, cyber power particularly so, perhaps for three reasons. The first is the sheer visibility or lack thereof of capabilities. We might traditionally measure tanks, guns, bombs and, and, and defence capacity, for example, when we're thinking about military power. You can't do that in quite the same way with, with cyber. So that makes it difficult. Um, the second is that there's a significant degree of secrecy around cyber capabilities and other forms of cyber-related behavior, whether that's diplomatic, economic, or intelligence, or military, or whatever you uh, care to choose. So that, again, makes it quite difficult sometimes to discern the precise contours and measure things out. And, and the third aspect, of course, is the effects. The whole point about having power is that you generate some form of effect for an adversary, or a target, or, or even a partner, but it's quite difficult sometimes to, to establish cause and effect between things you can't necessarily see or measure, and something else which may also be quite tangible. So there's, there's real, very real challenges in measuring uh, uh, both the, the extent of cyber power and also its effect.